Today we're going to talk about the tiny FPGA, but I want to start with a quick recap. As Alistair noted in an article last year, FPGA boards for makers are really coming of age. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and you can see my intro to FPGAs in a previous video that I'll link below. As he notes, you end up designing the circuit itself. That means that inputs and output pins are wired to each other with logic gates. So instead of having software coordinating those inputs and outputs, they just automatically do it on their own. This means that not only is it much faster, but also you can run multiple things in parallel, which is super cool. We're here to talk about the Tiny FPGA, and specifically the Tiny FPGA BX, which is the latest offering. As its name implies, it is a teeny tiny little FPGA board. Got one right here. Let's take a look. And it comes in this fantastic little package, which similar to the Teensy, comes with this sort of semi-postcard sized uh, data sheet, a sheet with data about the Tiny FPGA BX and also the bottom. One cool thing about this is that you can not only solder headers on and attach to a breadboard, but you can also solder directly to these other little pads here. So if you need something that's a little bit unusual, you can still access it while keeping the board super tiny. Let's take a look at the board itself. So yeah, you can look at tinyfpga.com for more info or even email Luke there, who is the creator, of course. Um, yeah, and it's so small. In fact, it is the same form factor as the Teensy 3.2, which uh, I actually got both of these at Teardown Conference in Portland, run by Crowd Supply, where I also got one of the uh, rejected, failed to test Teensy 3.2s from Paul Stoffergen. This I don't expect to ever be able to use, but it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, I usually work with boards that are perfect in every way. And it's kind of cool to have one that has failed a test. I just think it's neat. But you can see that the pin layout is pretty much exactly the same. Plus you have these extra ones down here, but you should be able to drop the tiny FPGA in pretty much anywhere you have the teensy and not endure too much terribleness. Alistair goes into this a little bit in his blog post from earlier this year. Uh, in these pictures from Luke, you actually see that he's attached it to these other pins, which are his flip pins. They are designed to turn any regular board into basically a chip form factor. Uh, and that's what he's got going on here. You see that these are not regular headers. They are flat on top, and they look basically the same way that IC pins do. And that is on purpose. So Luke has actually picked up a whole other market selling these pins on their own. Um, but you can get a little bit more background on what exactly the Tiny FPGA does, what it's useful for, and also this upcoming EX version, which is still in early prototyping. I'm really excited about the Tiny FPGA BX because it uses micro USB connection. The B series doesn't need to be programmed with a JTAG programmer, which is really great. <laughs> Instead, they have a built-in USB bootloader. It's a pretty new board, but it's already picking up a lot of steam and making a lot of improvements. Super excited to try this out. Go to tinyfpga.com to figure out where you can buy these from. You can also pick it up on Crowd Supply where it's already raised almost $25,000. So there's clearly a demand here. The Tiny FPGA BX itself is about $40. And you can get some detailed specs on this page. And be sure to follow our blog for more info from Alistair about the latest boards, including Tiny FPGA and beyond. Let us know what you're planning to use it for. We'd love to hear.